the new south. That's just a Metrolink line that's open for the first time today. It connects East Isbury to St. Werberg's Road in Chalton. First service left to a round of applause at 10 to 6 this morning. David Frankel, who's 11, and from Hill Green, was one of around 50 passengers on the first tram from East Isbury. Well, I'm a railway enthusiast, but just found it an exciting thing to do. It's actually my dad's idea. Told everyone on the bus and everyone thought I was completely crazy getting up this early in the morning as well. Oh yeah. <laughs> but this is gonna be at our local stop for the next three years until the airport line built. Big time. That's eleven year old David Frankel. BBC Radio Manchester. A student from Stockport says he's become so annoyed with his train service that he's lobbying the government himself to do something about it. Arts Michael Gaffney has more. Plenty of us are used to putting up with problems on our daily commutes, but though we might complain or even send out an angry message on Twitter, how many of us actually get up and do something to try and change things? 17-year-old David Franknell's trying to do just that. He got so sick of the bad service on the journey he takes to and from Heald Green to Manchester every day. He wrote to the Transport Secretary, Chris Grayling, laying out exactly what he thinks is going wrong and wasn't exactly impressed with the reply he got back. The response I got was the most patronising thing I've ever been sent. It was something along the lines of, da -da -da, thank you for writing to the Transport Secretary. Your observations have been noted. It is refreshing to see young people take such an active interest in government policy and I hope you continue to share your thoughts. And I felt quite insulted by that. David's letter wasn't just a list of complaints. He's come up with concrete suggestions for improving the trains through Manchester, building on the government's own plans. Since 2009, they've repeatedly delayed a scheme that had put extra lines between Oxford Road and Piccadilly and expand both stations. That was a specific project that was promised. It was a project that was not delivered. So now, with the help of social media, David started a grassroots campaign to try and get those improvements built for the sake of commuters across the city. He's hoping both train users and politicians take notice. There is a lot of passenger anger, but often it's just not being directed in the right place. One of the main underlying causes for the disastrous collapse of rail services in May 2018, specifically in Manchester, was the fact that they'd introduced a new timetable based on this idea that the new platforms will be there, but they weren't. We've been told a report looking into possible solutions to the problems with train services across the north of England is due in the next few weeks. My name is David Frankel. I travel to and from Manchester Piccadilly Station. We were due to receive two new platforms, 15 and 16, as part of the plan to widen the Castlefield corridor. This was itself an integral part of the Northern Hub, but you've cancelled that scheme or you've delayed it indefinitely, which as, as a direct result of that, we've seen the deterioration of rail services through Manchester. We've seen sustained disruption. We've seen Manchester become a bottleneck, a real performance liability for train services across the whole of the North of England. So enough of this tram train rubbish when are you going to get your head out of the sand and fund the rail improvements that manchester needs Stop the coup! with their options narrowing those who oppose a no-deal brexit or even a brexit at all are anxiously discussing tactics but it may be they've already missed their chance to delay so what if the next referendum still still shows that everyone still wants to be well, it depends on what the referendum says. I'm not proposing a repeat of the 2016 referendum because that will have the same problem of leaving the EU if that's the result. What does that mean? So, in the referendum that I think needs to happen, there would be a specific Brexit deal. So, for example, on the deal with Curly Cow, they put that hypothetically to the people. If a majority of people vote for a specific Brexit deal, then I would accept it because that's democracy. We care about our future and we demand that those in power care about it as well. Another Friday, another climate strike. And as the scale of this movement grows, its message is becoming increasingly urgent. Youth strikers are trying to put an impending environmental crisis at the top of world leaders' agendas. Today. We've come to ask to inherit a livable planet, please. Me too! Yes. We've got a Mr. David Frankel on, who is a student at Durham University. Now well, my thoughts are, you know, I was invited to come along to this college formal. It was supposed to just be a nice Christmas dinner where people came along to have a nice time. 
and eat a meal and spend yep. time with their friends and mm -hmm. unknown to anybody because this wasn't told you know this wasn't announced in advance this was not a pre-announced event rod little was there and he just gave this speech where he basically just tried to you know just upset as many people as possible and so oh, no. it's not a great shock what? that people who don't want to listen to yeah. this talk that they've not you know agreed to what come did and talk he say? This, this wasn't a session of the durham union yeah. where there was a debate you know this did was it not just say there was a guest speaker man. there at all hang, hang, hang on just a minute we were, i mean nobody I, was told I've in spoken... advance he would be there he said if you have an xy chromosome and a long dangling penis between your legs you're a man and nobody wants to hear about long dangling penises over their dinner no, but it was David, go back to university. You're no good to this program. Thank you very much indeed. Goodbye. I can't be bothered with people like that. Take a break.